Good morning, Asia. You've not heard from me in about a week. I've been busy with my overscheduled youngest child. Had a nice hockey tournament. Yes, we do play ice hockey in summer, although we've wrapped it up and it's now golf season officially. Uh, I took a basically took a, a week or so off and uh, you know have been spent all day today catching up with charts and previous week's news and so this one's going to be a little bit longer than normal. Um, we've got a new month. It's the first of July, second of July for Asia. It is a uh, new quarter and it's the second half of the year and we are cautiously optimistic. Uh, looking for a much, much busier second half of the year. And uh, I think there's going to be some great opportunities, great trading opportunities. So even though it is, you know, the middle of summer and people will be taking holidays, especially this week in the U.S. where you have the 4th of July on a Wednesday, um, I know a lot of my people are are taking the entire week off. But we'll get around to the the weekly calendar and uh, there's plenty of event risk out there this week and I for one will be uh, will be working most of the week and uh, and paying close attention because I think we could be in for a uh, of all the week there's a lot out there on the horizon uh, let's do a quick recap of last week we had some uh, we had U.S. Core PCM, we had the Eurozone CPI. Both have uh, finally reached their 2% mark, which is the uh, central bank's targets. And uh, U.K. CPI has been over 2.5%. Uh, it has been for several months, a lot of it due to the weak sterling. But it's interesting because at this juncture here, as we're in the middle of the year and starting the, the third quarter, uh, we're seeing inflation pick up in a lot of these countries, yet growth is stalling. Not a great mixture. Uh, something that will be, we will discuss going forward and, and paying uh, very close attention to. Um, there were some interesting charts last week. We'll get into those. Um, let's talk about some of the uh, some of the winners and the losers of the week. Um, the euro closed up. You know, 0.2%, nothing major. The British pound down 0.4. Dollar yen was up about a half percent on the week. Aussie dollar was down down a half percent. The big loser in the majors was the Kiwi dollar down 1.9% and, uh, and dollar Canada down 1%. Um, so those are the ones that kind of stand out, uh, stand out to me. Um, you can see here I've got the S&P monthly chart up because we are now, we just closed out the month on Friday. And look at this perfect doji month. Um, this is concerning. And we are, you know, we're looking for slower growth, higher inflation, a toxic mix for risk assets. And you will see how... You know, some of this you might be starting in the S&Ps and in the global equities um, and, and could lead to uh, some real action, and some real risk off uh, as we approach kind of later part of the summer. Um, but, you know, that, that's a bearish looking bar. I mean, it's if you can see it, it's a perfect doji month. Um, you know, we can get down to the weekly chart and uh, you can see that how important this uh how important this 2700 it held at 2690 2695ish on uh, again this is the S, uh, the SPX index um, the cash index so if you draw a trend line from let's see if this will work might be better with the minis yeah it probably is um, but if you look at you know if you look at this we've we've been in kind of a sideways to lower the past couple weeks and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely watching this because I'm concerned about the equity market potentially rolling over. Um, take a look at the NASDAQ as well. Here's a weekly NASDAQ. So we, we did have the reversal week two weeks ago, and then we closed you know, kind of middle part of the range. But again, we've had this nice uptrend here. 
and seems to be kind of losing some steam. Um, so, you know, this is something to, something to watch. If we look at the week ahead, we do have a lot of data. Uh, again, it's a U.S. holiday, um, but we have a, a PMI numbers coming out of Germany and U.K., and the U.S., ISM Manufacturing, we have the Australian, the RBA. We are, uh, Australia also has retail sales and trade balance. Um, so there's a, a decent amount of data the first few days of the week. And then, of course, it's uh, the first week of July, so we're going to get the ADP out of the U.S. We are going to get the... Uh, non-farm payrolls and the Canadian employment change uh, together on Friday coming out at the same time. So we, uh, we like, you know, we, we have enough event risk where we suspect that it could be a, a volatile week. Liquidity is going to be very low. We noticed that last week where it, it really started to, um, you know, some of these moves were much bigger than what anyone was expecting. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, the players being on holiday and less liquidity and uh, more defensive pricing. So something it's only going to be worse this week. Um, we're also in the knockout stages of the World Cup. There's some phenomenal games. Uh, I tweeted out earlier that the happiest people in the world, the Danish, uh, were not happy with the result today and it was a spectacular game and Casper uh, Schmeichel uh, put on a, a great performance and uh, for Denmark and unfortunately for the Danes they uh, they came up came up a bit short uh, but two shootout games on uh, on Sunday you can't ask for anything any more excitement um, let's go to the charts there are a couple interesting charts we'll start with the dollar index uh, and I, I'm looking at the weeklies because it's, you know, my Sunday, your Monday. There's a dollar index. Failed up at the 100-day. Have a double top now up here, 95.50. Stiff, stiff resistance. And doji for the most part. Almost a complete uh, outside reversal lower week. Uh, a lot of that happened on Friday. Um, mainly due to Trump, I suspect. Um if we look at the dollar CAD weekly, uh, we did have a bearish engulfing outside reversal lower week in dollar CAD. Uh, oil closed out on the highs of the week. And uh, CAD yen had a bullish engulfing outside reversal higher week in CAD yen. So, you know, those, those are kind of the more interesting, uh, more interesting, more interesting charts from the week. If we take a look at Kiwi dollar, you can see I said it was down about 2%. We're getting into these old lows here. And we closed just below this important low on uh, back from, uh, when was that? That was November, that old low. So 67, this kind of 67.80 area. And we're, we're trading there right now. So this, you know, th this is probably due for a bounce. And if you think the, the dollar is, is due for a pause, the uptrend, if, you know, going back to that dollar index chart, where we made that double top, you know, the Kiwi dollar is probably uh, the one that you could buy and play from the long side. Um, we don't really have any event risk coming out of New Zealand, but uh, that's something we'll be watching, in, definitely in the shorter term. Um, we've got tariff more tariff news coming up this week and counter tariffs from Canada and Mexico we have the Mexican election results that are coming out as we go to print um, waiting for China and India's response over the next couple of weeks so again we we suspect very a lot of volatility most of that uh, coming down to the fact that uh, a lot of the currency players, the liquidity providers, will be uh, will not be around this week. I suspect that the trading desks in North America will be quite light this week. Um, 
So that's that should do it for now. We will be updating you out throughout the week. Um, good luck in the, the new half of 2018, and uh, happy trading, and uh, keep the tin hat on because we're looking for more volatility ahead. All the best. We will speak to you on the European Open. Cheers.